Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a deadly duo in love that loves reacting to some death battle. It's death battle time. Yeah, and so for next month, uh, October, it's coming, it's tomorrow. And so we are going to uh, react to some more uh, death battles that like feature like, you know, monster characters and like vampires and stuff. And so uh, this is kind of like, you know, gearing up for that because like Carnage is, uh, is you know, pretty deadly and menacing and, and villainous. It's, uh... So Bethany is now going to explain how we do death battle on this channel. So we start off by watching the first half of the video where they talk about the characters, special skills, armors, weapons, mm -hmm. certain advantages they may or may not have. And then we stop the video and with our very, very scientific method of pen and post-it note, we will go ahead and predict who we think the winner is going to be. And the reason we do it this way is because there's a bet going on, which Ken will now explain. Uh, we have a bet to see who can get smoke death, ba death battles correctly. And then uh, that'll pick our cosplay outfit for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And uh, there's also, you know, sometimes we pick the same character. That's a tie. And uh, so when that happens, you know, whether we win, whether we win or lose, the tie column gets a point. All right, and the tie column is now ahead, and uh, that leaves it up to the community to decide on our on our uh, outfits for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, with some guidance from us, obviously. So really, you want the tie column to win because the tie column is you guys. Exactly. So we all have some skin exactly. in the game. Exactly. Uh, so right now the score is I have seven. Bethany has six. She won last time. Um, she got, she gained a point on me, and then the tie column has nine, so the tie column is, is ahead. And if you want all of our death battle reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. We're gonna check this out. Let's do it. All right. If my ex-wives have taught me anything, <laughs> yeah, so I married an axe matter. No murder. To crazy, like Carnage, Marvel's dangerously insane psychopath. Yeah. Or Lucy, the messed up murder lady from Elfenlied. Elfenlied. It's German. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills Ooh. to find out who would win a death, death battle. battle. Cletus Cassidy didn't have the chance to be a well-adjusted adult because his entire family was already crazy. While Cletus was just a boy, his mm. father got sent to jail for killing his mother. Don't tell you her name Pinky. Because she had tried to kill Cletus. Which she did because Cletus had tortured and killed her dog Fifi. Well, go, yeah. Miss Cassidy. All dog murderers deserve death, even if they're eight. Right, Jack Spaniels? <laughs> Good boy. Oh, and uh, Cletus murdered his grandma too, cause <laughs> eh, she's kind of a bitch. He didn't stop <laughs> there and wound up burning down his own orphanage. Years later, he was finally arrested and convicted for 11 murders. You mean the 11 murders they knew about? But while in prison, Cletus found that he wasn't alone. In fact, his cellmate just so happened to be Eddie Brock. Who you may know is that creepy guy covered in black ink called Venom. That ink is actually a symbiotic alien known as a Clintar. This symbiote bonded with Eddie, transforming him into a powerful and violent rival for the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. But what Eddie didn't know was it was pregnant. <laughs> Time to go out for Enjoy thrash metal music. Well, symbiotes actually reproduce asexually. When Eddie became Venom once again, the symbiote sort of oozed out its spawn and left it there. Just like me and my dad. Well, this new symbiote immediately oh, attached itself to Cletus, but unlike the Venom one, it merged through a cut on his skin, creating this suit made out of blood. Ew. That doesn't seem sanitary. <laughs> and together they became Carnage. A fitting name for a psycho mass murderer. Cletus and his new symbiote quickly got up to what they knew best, creating Maximum Carnage. Oh, that was such a good game. game. It was great. And with his new superpowers, he was a vicious force to be reckoned with. He has the same superhuman strength, speed, and durability as Venom, and supposedly even greater, like a Venom 2.0. <laughs> he can shapeshift to make all sorts of killer weapons, like axes, swords, and spikes. He can even rip those weapons off himself or launch them at his victims. Have you ever tried ripping your fingers off and throwing them at people? Because that's just kind of what Carnage does. The symbiote can also reach out with dozens of chaotic blood-soaked tendrils, perfect for strangling the people he doesn't want to see anymore. With a single touch, Carnage can infect a person with a portion of his symbiote, controlling or torturing them at his leisure. He has unbelievable regeneration, and even if somebody finds a way to disable his suit, the Carnage symbiote lives inside his bloodstream and can come back out through something as meager as a paper cut. Also, the symbiote literally sees everything around it. It's kind of like wearing a suit made of eyeballs. 
but let's say you're able to dodge his projectiles, outrun the tendrils, and get out of sight from the eyeball suit. You're still <laughs> not safe. He will catch you because he can sprout wings and fly. What the hell? Since when? Since realizing that shape-shifting is a really, really useful ability. Yeah. Oh, he's able to fly. What happened after he's I started totally aware of everything <laughs> around him, and he's full of blood? This guy's like a giant mosquito of death. Uh, sure. Carnage has said he's at least ten times faster than the average man, but that's pretty modest because Venom has shown he can move fast enough to catch up to a bullet after it's fired. And Carnage is frequently shown to be as fast or even faster than him. This puts Carnage over 1,500 miles per hour, over twice the speed of sound. He's lifted a 50-ton tank, and he can overpower Spider-Man, whose best supported strength feat was lifting that giant machine thing that weighed as much as a 1965 Deadpool. locomotive. Which would put it around 130 tons. Did you know those weird tendril things crawling around his body? When he wanted to find a missing journalist in New York, he climbed to the top of the Empire State Building and just stretched them all out over the city. He found her by this coastline, and this building nearby looks a lot like the consolidated Edison plant between 14th mm. and 15th Street. That's about two miles away. And as a thank you for saving her, she shot Carnage in the head. <laughs> well, fine. Save your own ass next time, lady. Hey, he was fine. Carnage's durability doesn't come from a sturdy build. Instead, his form is malleable and somewhat fluid. <laughs> Technically, his human body still exists somewhere in that mass of blood, flesh, and writhing tentacles. But even when he's hit by a train, struck by missiles, or blasted apart by a tritium bomb, he can always just pull himself back together. So long as there's a piece of him still around. Mm. Given the size of that blast, it looks like Carnage survived a blast worth 125 tons of TNT. Very impressive. Also, he once smothered and survived a gene bomb designed to wipe out all of humanity except mutants. He's even survived being ripped in half and thrown into space. Seriously. What kills this guy? Well, he does share the same weaknesses as other symbiotes, namely extremely loud noises and heat. Well, mm. until he traded the sound one for a weakness against some Cthulhu-looking magic. <laughs> Carnage has been through a lot, but with two minds as one, he always gets back up to keep doing what he oh. wants. Murder, murder, and, you know, more murder. murder. Carnage is chaos! There are some mysteries the world holds which no one is meant to know. Every day, something, somewhere, comes ever closer to destroying everything you hold dear. One such secret is the Diclona. Uh, no big oh. deal. They're just a race of crazy people who want to infect human beings to make more Diclonai and then wipe out all of humanity. Oh, look at the cute little horns. They look like kitty ears. To accomplish this, the Diclonai would have to rely on their queen. Cod, better known as Lucy. Luckily for everyone, some important people figured this out and captured her. I like how left handed that's like for your one of her. only warning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy's methods, let's just say they're not for the faint of heart. And let's also say that those lucky oh! important people were about to get oh. very, very unlucky. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ, what's happening? To truly understand, oh, let's take a step back. As an infant, Lucy was abandoned by her parents and left alone to suffer a life of constant discrimination. It was the horns, wasn't it? Right, even the average kid hates growing up in an orphanage, but it was yeah. especially painful for her. Until she found a stray puppy and decided oh. to take care of it. Oh. That adorable little critter and her became best friends. And then the other kids oh. from the orphanage went out and beat it to death. No. And oh, fucking dicks. Oh. Well, no shit, she wants to kill everyone. Yup, she's ahead, John Wick. Lucy. Tear up those little bastards. Do it. Yeah. Honestly, it was too quick for uh, him. Yeah, agreed. Oh. She should have took the hammer and beat Damn. them like this they did. This was the first time Lucy unleashed her psychokinetic vectors. As a Diclonius queen, Lucy is meant to use these vectors to Just infect queen? ordinary human beings with the Diclonius virus. She can spin oh, to at least some she uses them for so much more. For simplicity's sake, think of the vectors as invisible huh. arms, which can sprout from Lucy's back. Completely intangible. Lucy can use up to 28 hmm. vectors with a normal range of about six to seven feet. 
When she gets really serious, her horns grow and the vectors get way longer. Oh, and whoa. stronger. She can vibrate her vectors at different frequencies, and each level of vibration has different effects. Vibrate her vectors, it just sounded like dirty. That thing that my ex-wife had on the nightstand <laughs> that I thought was one of those crazy pens. At low frequencies, <laughs> her vectors can pass through objects with no effect. At a medium frequency, the vectors become solid, like extendable hands, while still completely invisible. Uh -huh. These can be used as shields and lift heavy objects. Oh man, Damn. if I had those things, I'd be messing with people all the time. Like tying their shoes from across oh, the room. Answers. Also, mm -hmm. since this seems to be a thing in this episode, she can fly. It's not <laughs> really flying, she's just lifting herself off the ground. With the third frequency, Lucy turns her vectors into invisible blades. These can cut through people and bend metal. And with the last and highest frequency, Lucy gets explosive. No, really. At this level, they finally become visible and can strike with enough force <clears throat> to detonate. Damn. They wow. don't call this chick the queen for nothing. Unfortunately, Lucy is not always in control of what she does. Turns out mm. she has developed several alternate personalities. Yeah, getting mm. shot in the head can do that to you. That injury specifically created Mew, a passive, almost childlike persona which exists as a coping mechanism for Lucy's trauma. As Mew, Lucy Aww. would finally find friends and began forging a path toward hopeless redemption. Unlike her third personality, the so-called DNA voice which constantly whispers in her ear that she's got a job to do. Kill them all, Lucy, before they hurt Ooh. more puppies. Oh, you're gonna hurt puppies in time with DNA voice. Yeah. She's fast enough to block bullets from a point blank range. Holy and crap! Once, she actually saved herself from a bullet after she had already been shot. As in, while the bullet was traveling between her skin and her heart. It looks That's like she's crazy getting fast. shot by an MP5, which fires bullets at nearly 900 miles per hour. With oh, her shit. body type, the distance between Lucy's skin and heart is less than an inch, probably around 2.4 centimeters. Given the bullet speed and the distance her vector would have to reach from her back before the bullet hit her heart, her vector had to move nearly 1,900 miles per hour. <laughs> That's over twice the speed of sound. She can throw a pen through a guy's Whoa. skull, brutal, and even toss this giant boulder. When compared to this guy, Bando, whom we know is six feet tall, we can determine the boulder weighs about Bitch 75 tons. Her vectors are also tough enough to block a missile from the Air Force. While the exact model of missile is unspecified, it is fairly large and likely an air-to-surface type. It's I bet one of the Air Force's slams or standoff land attack missile built <laughs> off the back of the Navy's harpoon missile. In fact, cool. the harpoon is used against a different Diclonius at one point. So this beast slammed into her vector at 500 miles per hour with a 1,000 pound explosive yield, and it didn't even phase her. Even without a vector shield, she survived a pretty nasty explosion herself. Though it did knock her out. Impressive, but how about the time she punched through an island? A strike literally what? compared to nuclear fusion. Whoa. This kicked up a 100 foot tidal wave and a 9.2 magnitude earthquake. A level so high there's only been four comparable quakes ever recorded. Her vectors can be as wide as buildings and reach into outer space, except that's about when Lucy reaches her limit. Right, as a Diclonius, Lucy has a few severe weaknesses. Her vectors can be nullified if she's struck in the forehead or if one of her mm. horns are broken. Also, if Lucy pushes herself too hard, she starts to melt. Kinda like ice cream out in the Texas sun. <laughs> it's not pretty. She's oh, just a big puddle of goop with a face. But she's still a total badass, even at her meltiest. While suffering agonizing pain, she was capable of single-handedly halting a massive military threat, while healing and protecting the person she loved most. Aww. Perhaps redemption wasn't so hopeless after all. Hey, let's watch her kill some more people. <laughs> oh, jeez! Hey, this is like what we did for our, uh... For the boys. For the boys. There's something about this song that apparently makes people think of death. <laughs> All right, I'm going the other room right now. All right, you go. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, carnage. Carnage! Oh my god! Yep. I did not think you were going to pick carnage. Yeah. I thought there was no way you were going to pick carnage because he uh, killed the dog. Yep. Lucy protected the dog. I was like, yep. oh, she's definitely going to go for Lucy. Um, I went for Carnage, one, because I thought you were going to go for Lucy. And so I actually think Lucy's going to win. Um, but I wanted Carnage because 
I like love Spider-Man so much and Carnage is such a great villain in it. And I thought that, you know, uh, Lucy has that one little thing where she like reverts to her uh, childlike form and Carnage is just like so psychotic and psychopathic that uh, I just think that, you know, he'll, he'll take advantage of that one little moment of, of weakness. So I'm cheering for Lucy. <laughs> I chose Carnage, but I'm cheering for Lucy. I hate Carnage for being a dog killer. I love Lucy for being the female John Wick. Yeah. Um, but... I felt like, and and we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. I felt like um, Wiz and Boomstick were trying to intentionally plant the idea <laughs> that Carnage was gonna lose. Cause they talk about, oh, the frequency and high noises and this and that, which I was like, okay, I feel like you're trying to throw me off the scent of Carnage when he seems to be our, our gold ribbon winner at this point. Plus, Lucy's got the childlike form and since Carnage is a symbiote, I'm not convinced that Carnage couldn't infect Lucy. Mm. So all of those things made me reluctantly but strategically choose Carnage. But I will win either way because if Carnage wins, I get a point. <laughs> if Lucy wins, I'm happier with the state of the world. I mean, so it, it was Carnage. And then I watched Lucy and I was like, oh, it's totally Lucy. And then I was like, well, if Lucy loses to Carnage and I lose a point because you win a point and I'm further mm. behind, I was like, that's just losing on too many levels. I was like, at least now if Carnage loses, I will still be very happy. Arguably more so, possibly. All right, all right. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. I think you did the same thing with Kakashi and, and Obi-Wan. I got I to gotta keep that in the back of my mind so we, we can go forward for my strategy uh, going, going forward. But I don't always use that strategy. You never know when I'm going to bust it out. <laughs> All right, here. Well, Ty Column once again gets gets the gets the the win right now. So ten to seven to six. We'll see if we are able to keep pace with it, or if it just keeps crushing. It's time, time for death, death battle. battle. Oh. Come on, Lucy. <laughs> Die. Oh. That was fairly easy. can't penetrate her shield. I know it looks like Karn is way overmatched. Yeah. Ooh, nice shield. Cats. Oh, smacked around. It's me. You're bleeding. God, it's just starving. Oh. oh that would have killed him. Does it hurt yet? Don't worry. I'll put you out of your misery. Come on, Lucy. <laughs> I think so.
I think she completely annihilated him. Yeah, Lucy! Those kids at the orphanage? Then Cletus. Lucy really hates dog killers. Yes. And yep. for good reason. Carnage was a challenging opponent. It was incredibly difficult for Lucy to deal any lasting damage against him. He had the durability advantage in the bag, though Lucy fighting as a puddle proved she could take a lot of pain and keep on fighting. Sadly, Carnage came up short in pretty much everything else. Mm. Right, yeah, Carnage so was tough, but mm. not invincible. Even his surviving that gene bomb isn't quite as impressive as it sounds. Since he had no other feats to even remotely back up planetary level durability, and the bomb was more akin to a biological weapon anyway. While Carnage's tendrils could pass speeds of Mach 2, Lucy's vectors once reached into outer space. By timing her wow. accompanying monologue and comparing the longest vector's length to the curvature of the Earth, it's clear she reached over 2,400 miles in 20 seconds max. Way longer than Carnage's two mile feet. All this means her vectors were moving at least 440,000 miles per hour. More than 500 times the speed of sound and 250 times faster than Carnage. Good luck getting past that. And this was really the biggest hurdle. With Lucy's redonkulous speed and Carnage's healing powers, it all boiled down to one thing. Who could hit the killing blow first? I mean, Carnage could respawn from scraps, so the yeah. only way to beat him for good was to totally vaporize him. And Lucy had the perfect answer to that. Remember that time she hit an island so hard she caused a 9.2 magnitude earthquake and a 100 foot tall tidal wave? Mm -hmm. Such a feat would require an enormous amount of explosive energy, approximately 31,000 tons of TNT, wow. similar to the bomb that hit Hiroshima. It's literally compared to nuclear fusion in the Elfin Lied manga. Elfin Lied, it's German. Uh, the point is, in order to beat Carnage for good, Lucy needed to totally obliterate him, and she could do that. The heat produced within the initial impact of a nuclear explosion can reach temperatures up to 180,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy more hell. than 18 times hotter than the surface of the sun. And to top it off, heat was Carnage's biggest Damn. weakness. Even if Lucy's explosive force was just a fraction of this, it would still have been far too much for him. She just needed to smack him before he could power through her vectors, which chances were pretty slim for that happening anyway, because there's a bunch of them and they're so damn fast. Hitting Carnage with a big explosion punch was way easier. Cletus and his symbiote may have had the endurance, but Lucy's space-worthy speed, overwhelming presence, and nuclear strength won the day. She dealt the Carnage needed for a total victory and took the lead. There, I said it right, Wiz. Happy? The winner is Lucy. Yay, Lucy! <laughs> All right, lesson learned. I'm gonna stop, uh, you know, this last time I, I vote for somebody that I wanna cheer for and I'm just gonna go for the, who I thought was gonna win. I thought Lucy was gonna win, but I went for Carnage because I wanted to cheer for him and I really wanted him to win. And I had a lead anyways, which I still have a lead now because he picked Carnage too, so it's all right. But our leads are dwindling compared to your lead. Yes, yes, compared to the tie column, uh, it, it is dwindling. So um, I did like this fight. I, I thought it was, it was a fun fight to, you know, the fact that Carnage was like, Basically, like, it almost seemed a little bit unfair too. Like Carnage, like couldn't really touch Lucy. Like I mean, got a couple cuts on her. Um, it was just like kind of like only a matter of time before Lucy was gonna end Carnage. Um, and it seemed like the only reason they like kind of paired him up was because they both could like go through like because one was a puppy killer and the other one was like had a puppy killed, and because they both had like the kind of like tendrils that like that went places. I will say it's very interesting, and I like that they highlighted this. The fact that I mean, because in my mind I was like, well, he's a symbiote. All he has to do is like cut her once, like break her skin once, mm -hmm. and he could potentially infect her. I mean, he's got a huge advantage in that world. Um, so I like the fact that they highlighted that he actually can't infect someone from his projectiles, but he has to actually make contact with their open wound. Yeah. And so even though he did break the skin of Lucy, it, it doesn't allow him to have that huge advantage I was kind of expecting he might be able to. Um, because his skills are such that, you know, he'd have to go out and like touch it rather than yeah. tossing his blood knives. Uh, it was cool uh, learning about Lucy though. And um, yeah. that was very violent, uh, you know, anime that she's a, a part of. I compared her to John Wick uh, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but those boys are a special kind of awful. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I, I mean, like we said at the time, I really think Lucy probably could have taken her time with those boys rather than just instant death. Um, more Ruse Bolton, Ramsey Bolton style is kind of more what I think they're deserving of. Yeah. 
but uh, I really do like this character and knew nothing about her going into it. So it's very interesting to learn more about her. You'll have to let us know what you thought about this death battle down below in the comments. And also, uh, you know, suggestions for more death battles to check out. We got a good list going. I mean, I think we can check out pretty much most of them, if not all of them. Um, and yeah, so if you want more of our death battle reactions, go ahead and check out the description of this video. We got a playlist there for you. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for this death battle for Carnage versus Lucy, which keep in mind. That our reaction is definitely not definitive.